grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to Broadmoor United Methodist Church and our season of Advent worship services. Advent is the Sundays before Christmas when we prepare our hearts to welcome the incarnation of Christ. As you join us in worship today, I pray that you will allow Christ to be born in your heart this day. Advent is a time of waiting, and waiting can be a time of joyful expectation. The Virgin Mary was joyful when she received the news that she would be the mother of Jesus, but she had to wait many months until the promise was fulfilled. Today we light again the candle of hope, the candle of faith, and now the candle of joy. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, we praise you for the joy you brought to the world at your first appearing. And so today, with the joy like that of an expectant mother, we look forward to your arrival when you come again to earth. Amen. And now in the spirit of joy, we sing this beloved hymn known as the Ode to Joy. Joyful, joyful, we adore Thee, God of glory, Lord of love. Hearts unfold like flowers before Thee, opening to the sun above. Melt the clouds of sin and sadness, drive the dark of doubt away. gladness, fill us with the light of day. All thy works with joy surround the earth and heaven reflect thy rays. Stars and angels sing around the center of unbroken praise. Field and forest, vale and mountain, flowery meadow, flashing sea, chanting bird and flowing fountain, call us to rejoice in thee. Thou art giving and forgiving, ever blessing, ever blessed, wellspring of the joy of living, ocean depth of happy rest. Thou our Father, Christ our brother, all who live in love are thine. Teach us how to love each other, lift us to the joy divine. 
John Wesley said, prayer is the grand means of drawing near to God. It's the breadth of our spiritual life. While petition and intercession are forms of prayer, they're, they're not the whole. The focus on prayer is not our request. It should be on God. Prayer is how we remain in communication with God and how we grow in our relationship with him. In his sermon, The Wilderness State, Wesley says this. He says that the neglect of private prayer is the most common reason people lose faith. So as we get ready to pray this morning, I'd ask for you to, to get comfortable, um, maybe relax, turn your palms up in your lap, take a few easy, steady breaths, and listen to what God might have to say to you today. Let's pray. Father God, on this third week of Advent, let us remember that the good news of Jesus' birth has the power to bring us great joy this Christmas season. Let us begin each day of Advent with devout meditations of unspeakable joy and blessings, praising you for the hope you've given us through the birth of your Son. Our joy is not dependent upon what's going on in our life, or in our world, it's not dependent on the people we're with. It doesn't depend on the gifts we give or the gifts we find under the tree. No earthly thing can ever give us complete joy. Our joy comes from you. That joy that flooded the hearts of the shepherds, the angels, the wise men, the host of heaven, and that joy that flooded the hearts of Mary and Joseph is the joy that still has power to overwhelm our hearts. Father, you offer that same joy to us now. We know you and recognize Jesus as our Savior and Lord. You gave us a reason to celebrate when you gave us the gift of Jesus Christ. You came to dwell among us. You went to Calvary's cross for us. You overcame sin and death and rose from the dead for us. You forgive our sins, and you give us eternal life. Our joy doesn't come from our jobs or our family or our relationships or our finances or our successes. Our joy doesn't come from what we have on earth or who we're with. Our joy is a gift. It's the gift you gave us that first Christmas in Jesus Christ. Our joy is encompassed in our Savior, our King. Flood our hearts with joy this Advent season as we reflect on the good news of Jesus' birth. It's in your precious Son's name who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you.
as we prepare to listen to our scripture this morning. Let us pause and pray together. Open our hearts and minds, O God, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. For we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Our scripture passage for today comes from Luke chapter 1, beginning with verse 39. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leapt in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leapt for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may have noticed something different about the Advent candle we lit this morning. See if you can see what's different. During Advent, we light purple candles on the first, second, and fourth Sundays. But the candle we light today is pink, not purple. Why is that? We light a pink candle on the third Sunday of Advent to remind us of the joy God is inviting us to experience when we allow Christ to make his home in our hearts. God's invitation to experience his joy is so important that this Sunday even has a special name, Gaudate Sunday. Gaudate is Latin for rejoice and has been the traditional call to worship for millennia. For thousands of years, Christians on the third Sunday of Advent have begun their time of worship with the words, Godate in Domino Semper Interim Dico Godate. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. You may recognize those words. They come from Paul's letter to the Philippians, which is sometimes called the Epistle of Joy. This is remarkable because Paul wrote this letter while languishing in a Roman dungeon. In his day, it was never clear that a prisoner would ever come out of prison cell alive. So how in the world can someone write a letter filled with joy from a dank, dark, dangerous dungeon? Because Paul knew from his own personal experience the gift that God wants to give us all, the gift God wants us all to have, the joy that comes from experiencing the nearness of Jesus Christ. I believe it was the nearness of Jesus that caused the child who would grow up to be John the Baptist to leap in the womb of his mother Elizabeth in our scripture passage today. Luke records Elizabeth as saying, why has this happened to me? that the mother of my Lord comes to me. For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leapt for joy. John leapt for joy because in the presence of Jesus, we experience the fullness of joy. In a year like 2020, a year filled with so much hardship and heartache, I believe joy is what we really want for Christmas. Beautiful thing about true joy, the joy we experience in the presence of Jesus, is that it is not dependent upon our external circumstances. If you examine your own life, I believe that you will see this to be true. Almost every one of us has experienced a time when, despite the fact that everything seemed to be going our way, that there was an emptiness, a sadness, a longing for something more. You may remember a 
well-known Dennis the Menace cartoon from many years ago. It's Christmas morning and Dennis is surrounded by dozens of presents, everything a boy could possibly want or need, and yet looking at his parents, Dennis says, is this all? We find it humorous because we recognize ourselves in him. He got everything he wanted. And there was still a longing for something more. You already know that even if you get everything on your Christmas wish list, there will still be an emptiness. You know this because deep down you already know that no created thing can satisfy the deepest hunger of your heart. Our deep hunger, our true longing, can only be satisfied by experiencing the presence of Jesus Christ in our life. It's only the presence of Jesus, only in the presence of Jesus, that we experience the fullness of joy that God created us to experience. Jesus came to give us his joy. He says so in John 15, 11. Jesus said, I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. Jesus gives us incredible promises in these words. I have said these things so that my joy may be in you. Imagine that. Imagine experiencing Jesus' own joy in your life. Experiencing a joy that's not dependent on everything going your way or everything being just right. An experience of joy directly flowing from the heart of God into your very own heart. A joy that makes you whole. A joy that makes you complete. That's the promise Jesus is giving to you here. So how can we experience this joy? If we look back just a few verses, Jesus tells us the secret to a life of joy. And that secret is abiding in him. As the Father has loved me, Jesus says, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. Abiding in Jesus is the key to unwrapping God's gift of joy. So how can we abide in Jesus' love? I have discovered in my own life that for me, abiding in Jesus' love is, is finding ways to remember, always remember that no matter what, the Lord is always near. Because he has promised to always be with us, we can trust that even in the most challenging times, even on the darkest days, we can trust him to give us what we need. What would it look like for you on this Gaudate Sunday, this Sunday of joy, to trust your whole self to Jesus? What would it look like for you, whatever things get hard or harrowing, to pause and remind yourself that Jesus has promised his joy to all who abide in his love? Imagine making room for these words in your life, letting them be a source of joy for you. Imagine them flowing into the very center of your heart and rising up slowly until your mind is filled with them. And then when you experience the overflowing love and joy of Jesus for yourself, you'll no longer find it difficult or overwhelming to rejoice. Joy will simply well up within you so that you cannot help but experience it. And when you experience the joy that God wants you, created you to experience, then you, like John the Baptist in his mama's womb, will leap for joy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.
Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare him room. And heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the earth, the Savior reigns. Let all their songs employ. While fields and floods, rocks, hills, and plains, repeat the sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy, repeat, repeat the sounding joy. He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love and wonders of his love and wonders and wonders of his love. In just a minute, we will conclude our time together with our benediction song. But right now, I encourage you to watch this brief video on ways that you can give to the ministry of our church. There are many ways that you can give toward the mission of Broadmoor. You can go to broadmoormethodist.org slash giving to give safely and securely online. You can text BE MORE to 73256. And of course, you can also mail checks to our physical address at 10230 Molly Lee Drive, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, 70815. My friends, may you grow in and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior. My friends, may you grow in grace and in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. To God be the glory now and forever now and forever, amen. To God be the glory, now and forever, now and forever, amen.